As we approach the halfway point then in season number two here at Southampton, we've been doing okay. I've got lots of games to catch you up on in today's episode, but we're back into a transfer window. It's the January window season two. And to be honest, who knows what Gary Megson has got up his sleeve for this window. We're going to find out today as well as looking forward. How can we do in season number two? Let's get into it. And welcome back to the Southampton save here on the channel. The save where we've put all of our transfer business in the hands of our director of football, Gary Megson. So far, I think we discussed this a little bit last episode, but I think his transfers have actually been pretty good. He's thrown in a few weird shouts, though. He sold Romeo or loaned out Romeo when we needed him. Last episode, he ended up selling our only goalkeeper or loaning out. It was Alex McCarthy that he loaned out right on deadline day, wasn't it? And we were left with well, no goalkeepers. We're back into a January window. We're back into a transfer window. And to be honest, Gary Megson could go and do something similar all over again. We, it remains to be seen what happens. But we've made a start to our season, our second season in the Premier League. And after 16 games, we are seventh in the league. 27 points, eight wins from our 16 games, three draws, five losses. It's not terrible, is it? It's not too much of an improvement from last season. I guess we could say that. But after losing the first, the opening game of the season, we've been on a decent run. We are only, let's look upwards. We're only five points off the top four. If we could finish in the top four, that would be sensational, wouldn't it? Can we stay in the European spots? That's my aim for this season. You can see some of the uh, player stats here. I will go through all of the games now, but James Ward-Prowse has got himself eight assists, lots of those from set pieces. Tino Livramento has been really good this year. He's got himself four player of the matches in those first 16 games too. We've had a good start and there's lots to be lots to be positive about. So let me show you those fixtures then. After the live com that we had, we did well, we went out of the Carabao Cup in the second round. We lost 3-2 to Fulham. Uh they scored in the 89th minute. But then have a look at this. Look, we won 7-4 against Palace. 3-2 against Wolves, 1-0 against Brighton, a narrow loss to Chelsea. We're still not really, we're not expecting to win games like Chelsea, but we're expecting to win games like Burnley. We beat them 3-0. You can see Martinez getting in the goals here. Look, he scored a fair few, actually. Shea Adams has continued to be our main man, though, up front. We beat Brentford, lost to Leeds, beat Fulham, lost to Everton, drew to Leicester, drew to West Ham. Now, there's a few games here without a win, but this, this little period here, told me that maybe the systems that we're using, the tactics where we're trying to be a little bit more pragmatic away from home, this sort of showed me that they are working. I know we lost, but we lost 5-3 to City. We were in this game. We weren't terrible. We scored two late goals. Look, Badia Shile and then Adams. But we didn't get blown away by a City team that is obviously really, really good. And we backed it up by getting a draw at home to Liverpool. Even with 10 men, look, Ward-Prowse was sent off. So at around this point, I was thinking... I think we're all right. I think we're a good team. And I don't think we need to do too much tweaking. I've done so much tweaking of these tactics. You saw me talking about it, right? At the start of last episode, talking about the new systems that we're going to, to adopt for this season. I think they're working. We beat Arsenal 3-1. And then we've had this winter break where the World Cup was taking place. I'll just show you, by the way, because you probably do want to see. The World Cup was won by... It was won by Italy. They beat Brazil in the final. England, you might be wondering where they came. They finished. Ivory Coast got to the third place playoff. Semi-finals, there they are. England, not even in the quarters. They went out, England, to the Ivory Coast in the second round. The first knockout round. Uh, not the best from England there. There's the Ivory Coast team. It was a Frank Kessier winner that knocked them out. There's the England team in case you are interested. Trevor Chalabers playing CDM for the England team. Interesting approach from... Is it still is it still Gareth Southgate? No, it's Ernesto Valverde. I don't know if he might have come in after the World Cup, actually. Either way, things are changing in this save. Let's go back to where we are, because after that break, we did play one Premier League game. It was against Barnsley, who are back in the Premier League after a very long hiatus. We beat them 3-1, and that puts us to this spot here. 16 games, 27 points. I'm okay with how we've done, right? We are... This is the setup. If you want to have a look at how the players are performing, you've got Shea Adams has got nine. Martinez has got eight. You've got some good performances. If you look at the average ratings, I'm pretty happy with it. We've, you can see who started the most games here. We're sticking with the two systems. This is the home system. One little change, because I wanted to get Ugarte into there, I didn't want to put, play him as a Metzala on attack, so I put him on support, and he seems to be doing okay. His average rating is 7.04. He's been a good signing. He's a really good player. And then away from home, we've gone with with this a little bit more where we've got this anchor in there actually i've been playing with you as a, as a, a support as well actually like that just to mention third one here 
I think I'm going to come up with a three at the back system. A lot of you were asking for it in the comments at the end of last video. I think you're exactly right. The way that we can get Salisu and Badiashile and probably Bednarek into the team is probably to play three at the back here. Maybe a back five or back three with two wing backs. Because we've got good wing backs in Liveramento and Deadditch and Carl Walker Peters. I think I'm going to build this as my third tactic here. Although I did say I was going to try out these ones to see if they work. And I've been quite happy with them. So maybe that's something to think about in the future. And the future is where we're going to go next. Where we're going to go and play these games here in January and come back on deadline day. Deadline day and we're going to find out what Gary Megson does in this January window. So I will see you. I'll see you at Brent. Let's do a live com. We asked the question. I'll see you for Brentford. We're going to do a live com and then we're going to do the end of the window. I'll see you for Brentford. Okay, so it is now the 29th of January and we are right about to play Brentford. We're going to do it as a live com as some of you wanted the live comms. And there was a good discussion actually in the comments last episode about whether we need a live com every episode. I don't think we do every episode, but maybe big games. I feel like doing one today. So we're going to play Brentford in this away game here because we're having a really good season. Before we play it and before I show you some of the business that has been done. Yes, there has been done some business here by Gary Megson. Just wanted to say thank you very much for being here. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel if you are enjoying it. And how about... A little bit of a target for you. I don't usually do this, but if we could set a very ambitious like target, how about a second episode for the week? I usually do maybe one episode of this a week because there's a lot of games to go and play. But let's say if you hit 1000 likes on today's episode, then we'll have another episode this week, maybe on Thursday or Friday of this week. I think we got about 600 likes on the last episode. So it's an ambitious target, but I feel like you guys can do it. And, um, if you do, we'll have an extra episode. How does that sound? Of course, make sure you subscribe to the channel as well if you are enjoying it. Let me show you then the business that Gary Megson has done since you were last with me in the 29 days of January so far. We have signed two players. And those two players are Luis Junior, both Brazilians, actually. Gary's gone out. He's clearly just been watching the Brazilian League or something because he has signed Luis Junior, actually from a Portuguese team, him. But he's a Brazilian goalkeeper. He's now 22. He was 21 when he signed. So I'm going to let him off for him being slightly older. His birthday is the 14th of January. So when he signed, he was still 21. We can let him off. He is a pretty good young Brazilian goalkeeper who can now take the place in the squad of like Alex McCarthy, who was loaned out, right? So maybe Gary did have a plan after all. Just to mention, we did play three matches with Langley in goal. If you remember at the end of, it was Chelsea first of all. Look, Langley in goal 6.6, .6, then Burnley, then Brentford, then uh, Forster was back for the Leeds game. We actually won two of our three games with Langley in goal. I think for those three games... He got, a, he got a 7.03 average rating. He was pretty good, was Daniel Langley. He filled in nicely despite not really having very much ability. So he won't be needed anymore, though, because we've signed a new goalkeeper in Luis Junior. He has not got any caps for Brazil yet. Maybe we can change that. The other signing is another Brazilian. Another exciting Brazilian signing. I like this a lot, you know. It's Keiki, the Brazilian centre-back wonder kid from Santos. He is listed as a wonder kid. He's not really my type of centre-back. He's very similar to Renan in this regard, who we've disregarded and we're not going to use him. But he is a 5'11 centre-back. It really does push me towards wanting to use that three at the back system that we talked about a little bit earlier. I have set one up. I think we might use it in this Brentford game to test it to see how it goes. Maybe that's a risk because we've not been using it all year. But signing a player like Keiki makes me think, let's try and get him in there. He's got a nice bit of potential. He's already really good. He could improve us, I think. Those are the two signings so far, and we still have £26 million in the bank if Gary wanted to go and sign somebody else before the end of this window during deadline day, which we're going to include in today's episode. I think, though, let's have a look at this system. Let's have a look at this three at the back system that I've set up, and we'll get ourselves into this Brentford game. Oh, before I actually do get into this game, I suppose I need to tell you how we got on in the matches in January, don't I? We have, we've played how many? Four, five games in January. The first one was Sheffield United at home. It was a board draw, nil-nil in this one. If I show you the match st stats, match stats, I should say, we were very unlucky not to win this game. You see the setup with the 4-1-3-2, 22 shots, three xg we didn't manage to score our strikers shooting some blanks in this particular game it's fine we we still dominated the game i was okay with it we backed it up by winning 5-1 in the fa cup with through in the fa cup to the fourth round where we'll have wolves so premier league opposition in the fourth round gillingham were dispatched 5-1 goals from badia Chile, dead ditch armstrong from the spot 
Adams and then Martinez, both strikers scoring at the end. And then some good results in the league, actually. We beat Aston Villa 1-0, James Ward-Prowse, after 13 minutes. We were probably just about worthy of that as well. We had a better XG. We played quite well in this one. You can see the setup we used, beating Villa. And then we drew to Manchester United. We were 3-1 up in this after half an hour. Darwin Nunez for Manchester United scoring two in three minutes. Two in two minutes almost, you could say. Right towards the end to snatch a point for them. Bit disappointed not to win it. Again, we played well in that, but didn't quite get the result. A draw, still fine away from home at United. It shows how good we are, actually. And then another draw to finish off. 2-2 with Leeds, this time at home. This time we were 2-0 up and again conceded two late goals. Maybe I need to go a bit more defensive towards the end of games. I'm not quite sure. Again, if you look at the match stats... I think we're unlucky not to have won this game. We were just about the better team. James Ward-Prowse scored twice in this one. Ward-Prowse, by the way, what a player. Just look at his profile. If I show you, if you've not seen James Ward-Prowse's profile in FM for a while, he is so good. He's got 20 free kicks, 20 corners, but he's also got 20 natural fitness and 20 stamina. 19 work rate. He's a brilliant midfielder. That's why. That's what, a part of the reason why I wanted to do a Southampton save because he's really, really good. 28 as well. A few years left in him. Today, we play Brentford. And before we go into that, a little look at where we are in the league table. We're currently eighth. I talked about wanting to be in Europe. If we win this game, we do leapfrog into fifth. We go above Manchester United on goal difference. We'd be one point off Tottenham, who are fourth. They would have a game in hand. But we're not, we're not out of the fight for Champions League spot. Definitely a Europa League spot. We do need to go and beat Brentford, though. And that is what we're going to do now. By looking at this system, looking at this tactic... I think we're going to use it. The three at the back. It means that if we wanted to, and I'm not necessarily, because he's only just signed, not necessarily sure I want to do this, but we could. Who do I take off this bench? It's probably the goalkeeper. I don't really like having a goalkeeper on there. We could bring Bednarak out and bring Keiki in as a right centre-back. Oh, Forster's got an injury. Uh, he's probably going to be okay. Livramento will need to come out, so Dedic will start on that side. Let's put Perro on the bench for left back. Oh, by the way, the youngster, Olivier Kitengi, we came through our youth intake, 17 years old. I played him, and he scored. The youngster. So we may, might have an exciting player in the future there. He just literally won game, one goal. You take that, don't we? So three at the back with a two ball players, defenders, and a central defender. DLP in front, wing back, CM attack, Metzala, two AFs, two advanced forwards up front. I think this could work. It should work, right? It's pretty simple on paper. I think we're going to go with it with today's game against Brentford. Now, the question is, do I give Junior a debut or do we go with Forster? He doesn't need a fitness test and he's fully fit. Maybe I should put the goalkeeper on the bench. Let's do the Dowie out and Luis Junior on the bench then. This is the team. Let's get into this game. Okay, here we go then into this game. Let's submit that team. As I was just getting ourselves up to this match, by the way, a bit of breaking news that is happening as we do this. I realized that I recorded that intro part before the game I could submit the team. It was earlier on in the day. A bit of news is that there has been a bid for Stuart Armstrong. £26 million. I think it was Newcastle that have made a bid for him. So he could be on the way out. I think it's been accepted by Gary Megson. So we could have a little bit of business happening here as we approach deadline day. Gives us a load of money that maybe Gary goes and spends on deadline day. It would be nice. There's the Brentford team. They've also gone with three at the back. Ivan Tony and Buemo up front. They'll be dangerous. Here's our team then. I have started Armstrong despite that bid, even though he might be moving on. We've got Keiki, Salisu, Badiashile, that new look back three. There's the league table. It'd be lovely to jump up, wouldn't it? Above Manchester United into fifth. I feel like we'd ha we're having a really good season if we can get there. This will be a tricky game, though. Away at Brentford. I think they're about 14th in the league. We're underway, and I've encouraged them. First 10 minutes, and not much has happened in this uh, live com. In fact, 15 minutes in, nobody's had a shot. This could be the worst live com ever if it continues like this. 20 minutes, no shots. Now we have a set piece. It's Brentford on the attack, and it's headed over. It wasn't even that good of a chance. I think it was, was it Doria? Doria? The centre-back, the wide centre-back that they're using. It's the first shot on goal or at goal. It went over. We've now had a shot on target. 0.06 XG. So it wasn't a particularly good chance for us, was it? Here we go, though. Highlight with us on the ball for the first time. Dedic, the new signing at the start of the season to Martinez, signed last season. Been good this year, actually. Here's Stuart Armstrong, who might be leaving. Well, Prowse! I mean, I gave him the big build-up, didn't I, before the game. He was onside there. Baby legs it a little bit straight at the keeper. First proper chance that we've seen, though. First shot on target that we've seen in the uh, in the highlights. Half time. It's not a classic, this one. I will probably go as far as saying, but nil-nil away from home. Would we take a draw? I think we probably would take a draw, wouldn't we? I mean, 
I, I think I probably would. At this stage, draw your away games, win your home games. It might just be enough to get us into that top top five. Maybe not top four, which maybe we're aiming for. Here come Brentford in Buemo. We've got the ball back though. Keiki, his debut. He only signed, I think, yesterday in the game and we've just stuck him straight in because he's a new player do you ever do that with your players whenever you sign a new signing you just get them in the team i guess it's even more it's slightly weirder when it's not even my signing when the director of football has but we've stuck him in here's shea adams our main man for two seasons go for it david ray makes the save we're gonna see shea adams score i probably wouldn't expect him to score from like 40 yards out or 30 yards out there but we'll take it corner for ward prowse towards keiki a debut goal was on the horizon he's headed over though is it keiki or keiki I'm going to go with Keiki because it's way funnier. 40 or so minutes to go then. 35. They start with a free kick here, Brentford. I think that's Ross Barkley playing for them in their midfield. Here's De Silva passing it around to Christopher Ayer. More on the right-hand side. Is this going to be their highlight or ours? Ayer, forced backwards, goes back to the goalkeeper. But the Thomas Frank, they've lost it. Well, Prowse with the, the uh, get the ball back and oh, it was Adams. I couldn't find my words because I was excited about the potential goal. With the pressure I was trying to save from James Ward Prowse, but Shea Adams again baby legged it. The corner. Keiki Badiashile straight at the keeper. We are forcing some chances here. Looking good from set pieces, mainly. We've had the better XG. Martinez is now very tired. It's telling me to bring on Johnny because I don't think we've got a striker on the bench here. I probably should make some changes, shouldn't I? 65 minutes in. Shall we do. Who can we. Who am I looking on this bench thinking they can make a difference here? Let's put this in the right order. Is. Drew Armstrong's not having a great game. Let's get Kudus on in the midfield first change. I mean, at this stage, maybe we're thinking we'll get the draw. We are the better team, though. Maybe we should go for the win here. Do we have anybody who could do anything in attack? Do you know what, Gary? A new striker on deadline day would not go amiss here. Definitely not, because I think we are a little bit lacking there. Is there anyone who could even move up front? Not really. So I think Martinez is going to have to stay on despite being tired. Let's do Perro on at left back for Dedic. Slightly more, he's actually a left footer. Maybe could be slightly more orthodox on that left hand side. Badiashile's not having a good game either, a 6.3, but I think we're going to risk him. Anybody else that could get us a goal here? I'm not really seeing it. Let's just go with those two changes for now, or that extra one change there. 10 minutes to play. Let's demand more of them. Can we find one chance towards the end here? Late goal's been happening quite a lot. Are we going to have a nil nil? live comp we are it, it might be the worst live comp ever i mean at this stage if you just want to leave me a comment just saying worst live comp ever um i deserve it that is that was poor it's not the end of the world it does take us back to seventh and four points now off spurs only true actually we're only four points off champions league football i still believe it's not a great result it wasn't a great performance but i just said it was one of those days it's not the end of the world though is it new three at the back system we looked good defensively maybe lacking in attack we need that new strike that, that new striker signing i think and that i think is where we turn our attentions to for now deadline day we've got a couple of days in game we've got a load of money to spend especially if Stuart armstrong does sell i'm gonna go to the deadline day and we'll go through it together i'll see you then here we are then deadline day is about to start and a couple of things before i actually click the button to take part it says that Newcastle are thought to be considering a move for Ibrahima Diallo from us. And also, we're being linked with Jao Pedro. We talked about wanting a striker. There's a striker, 21 years old. He's also Brazilian. It seems like Gary Mason loves the Brazilians. Maybe he's been watching the Her to Brazil save over on Twitch. Maybe. But I would absolutely take this. We want another striker. Maybe that would be great. It even says it here. Look, Jao Pedro, £22 million. Stuart Armstrong is having contract talks with Newcastle, £26.5 Diallo, £38 million is the rumour. I would bite their hand off for that. We really take some... Taking them over £50 million for these two players, I'd take it. Bring in Jao Pedro. Go and spend a bit more in the summer. That'd be a great deadline day, Gary. Go and make it happen. We're going to take part. It's all gone yellow. One second. We need to make it go yellow. No, it's gone all yellow. We're ready to go. We're also playing Liverpool tomorrow, which is a small thing, but we're going to go through the deadline day. First, continue. We need to see, actually, Nathan Teller submitted a transfer request. Interesting. It's got a bit of bit of value, actually, Nathan Teller. Wouldn't it be the worst thing in the world if we did sell him? But he, I don't think we've had any bids yet. Let's keep going. 14 hours remaining. Okay, first bit of news then. There's been a loan bid or a loan approach for Idaho, who still doesn't have a work permit, I don't think, who is in the under-23s. We've had a bid for, or three bids for Jan Valery, which have all been accepted. So there's another player potentially on their way out, as well as Nalundalu, who is going to go 
maybe out on loan have these been accepted i think they might have done so there is business happening on deadline day it shows that gary is maybe open to making things actually happen let's hope for some incomings nothing as of yet stoker made a finnegan offer no nothing yet okay idaho had his work permit rejected so he's not going to be going to brentford either it makes sense i don't know why we signed him without a work permit 11 hours to go anything on here we've got ah oh. armstrong's rejected newcastle now i kind of wanted that to happen just because of how much money we would have got for it 26 million pounds it's not the end of the world he's a really good player to have actually but 26 million i can't say that i'm not disappointed to not get that money that would have been quite nice but oh well not the end of the world teller is maybe going on loan then. So is Nalundalu. Okay, we'll continue. We'll see what happens. We're still linked with Jao Pedro. Maybe we'll go and get him. Okay, with eight hours remaining, we've sold somebody. It's Jan Valery. So we've missed out on that money for Stuart Armstrong, but we've got 450k for Jan Valery. It does mean that with eight hours remaining, we've still got 27 million pounds to go and spend, but no bids for Jao Pedro as of yet. Will there be any for any of our other players or anything else happening? Or will he just leave it like this? We've sold a couple, but we still need a striker. Who is our backup striker? Oh, I should have mentioned, actually. The reason we don't have any backup strikers is because if we go to here, we have sold quite recently, if you have a look at this look, Adam Armstrong to Burnley for £2.7 million. So that's the reason. That was at the 7th of January. Jack Stevens as well, I didn't mention this one either, did also move on for £4.6 million, also to Watford. Teller on loan, Dean Lynch on loan, Delundalo, or Nalundalo, sorry, also out. Those, you can see the signings just in case. We also signed James Sweet as another player who came in who, I, I mean, I'm not really sure why. And Owen Bray came in. Look at his picture. Who, like, has he posed for that? Like, <laughs> six hours remaining. Let's continue. Oh, we've made a bid. Okay, there has been a bid gone in. Wow. Okay, this is not what I was expecting, and I don't know how I feel about this one. That's not a striker, Gary Megson. We've bid for Ridvan Yilmaz, who is a 21-year-old Turkish left back. We have bid £27 million. This is not a small bid. Do we need another fullback? I guess he can play left wing back. But we've brought Dedic in in the summer. Does this make any sense when we need a striker? I guess we don't have a real natural left-footed left back because Dedic, even he, is right-footed, isn't he? But... Does this make sense? It's been accepted. We've offered him a wage. It looks like it's going to happen. This is why this is why these saves are interested. We can't do anything about this, but it looks like Gary's going to go and make a mad signing on deadline day. It's done. It's happened already. He has spent £27 million on another wing back. Ridvan Yilmaz has joined. I mean, he looks pretty good. He's got great potential. Massive value. In that regard, he looks fantastic, but... Did we need him? I mean, let's slot him in and have a look here. Ridvan Yilmaz instead of Dedic. Does it improve us? Maybe. He's left-footed, which is going to help on this side. But it seems like a bit of a weird one. He spent all of the money now. Like, actually, he hasn't spent all of the money. Was it £27 million up front then? Or was he actually... It says 27 but it looks like we've actually still got a bit of transfer budget to still go and spend. So maybe, just maybe, he's got a, another rabbit up his hat. It would be nice if he did. Go and sign Jao Pedro. I don't think it's going to happen. There's four hours remaining. Will he, will he surprise us? I don't think he will. Three hours remaining. Let's just go and find out and get to the end of deadline day. But it's a bit of a questionable one. Questionable indeed from Gary Megson. It says, uh, is it a classic deadline day panic buy? I don't know. You'll have to ask Gary Megson. I don't know the answer to that. It's definitely a weird one. There is, I mean, Burnley are in for Joel Idaho now. It doesn't look like anything else is going to happen. We're once again at the end of a deadline day, at the end of a transfer window, sort of scratching our head at what our, our director of football has done here. I mean, it's not a bad signing again, is it? It's actually a good player that we've brought in, but it's not the player that we necessarily needed. He kind of got my hopes up by the links to Jao Pedro. There is our January business then. Valerie, Armstrong and Stevens out. Lewis Jr., Keiki and Yilmaz in. We've spent £40 million there. We've bought some good players to the club, like Yilmaz and Keiki. I think Lewis Jr. is a great backup goalkeeper. Armstrong is maybe a loss, £2.7 million. We didn't use him that much, though, did we? Look, last... I mean, he played six games this year, so maybe it's fine to sell him on, but I think we're lacking in attack now. What have you done, director of football? What have you done? That, though... Is where we're going to leave it for today next episode we're going to be at the end of the season i'm going to go and play all of these games here unless unless you meet the like target of 1000 likes in which case 
we'll be back much sooner that, than that because I won't be having time to go and get this done. What we will do is we'll come back a little bit sooner. We'll do a live con. We'll talk through how we've been getting on for the rest of this season. We'll have a lovely time doing that. But we'll leave it there for today. Thank you so much for watching. Please do remember to like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I really, really do appreciate your support. And if you've enjoyed this and made it this far, let me know in the comments down below by saying I made it to the end. Thank you for all of your support. If you want to support more, you can join over on Patreon and show your support over there for £5 per month and you get a load of extra perks with it too, as well as your name in the video at the end, in the credits. Here, go. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.